Hello and welcome to this Victor tutorial. In this video, I am going to walk you through our parametric building application. Right now, you can see the final application that we are going to build together. I can change the amount of floors with the slider. I can change the dimensions and I can change the color. And you can see it all happening live in the application. We will be starting with an empty app template. To quickly remind you how to create a template, you will first need to make the folder for the app. You have to do that in the Victor Apps folder. Then we need to generate the files using the Victor CLI Create App. And for this tutorial, you will want to choose the type editor. Next, we will clear our Victor database using Victor CLI Clear. Then we can use Victor CLI Install to install the application. Once it's done installing, we can start the app and begin building the elements. If you have not done this before or would like a quick refresher on how to do it, you can watch the in-depth video in our documentation. And if all went well, you should have the same overview as I do. Now we're going to open the browser by clicking this link and we're going to cloud.victor.ai. And here we will open our development workspace. This is where we will be able to see all the changes that we make as we build up our application. Now let's go back to our editor and jump into app.py. You can see we have this app.py template with some initial imports, and then we have our parameterization class and the controller class. Victor does not require you to know what classes are, only that you recognize that we will use the parameterization to define our inputs and the controller class for our views and calculations. As a quick reference to the final app, the parameterization will correspond to this left side of the screen and the controller to this right side. We will begin by adding a simple geometry, a cube in our case. Let's start by importing the square beam from Victor Geometry. The next imports we will need are the geometry result and the geometry view from victor.views. That's the result, and then we need geometry view. Great. Then we go into our controller class, and we will begin by assigning a decorator. That will be the geometry view. We're going to name it parametric building. And we will give it a duration guess equal to 1. The next step is to define a function. We're going to call it get the geometry. We will need to add some arguments. We will have self, params, and the quarks. Then we will define our cube as the square beam. And the square beam needs three arguments, the length in every direction. So we'll do length x, set it to one, the length in the y direction, set that to one as well. And finally, the length in the z direction will also be equal to one. Then, in order to see the cube, we will need to return it as the geometry result. All right, then we will save it by hitting Control S. As you can see, the app is reloading. App is ready. Then we can go into the browser, refresh the page. And if all went well, you should now be able to see the cube be able to pan around it, you can zoom using your mouse. And if you look at the top right corner, you will find three dots here. And these are some standard features that the geometry view comes with. The next step is to make the cube adjustable into the slab. Let's go back into the editor. And then we will start by importing the number field from the parameterization. Like so. 
then we're going to add two number field input parameters in our parameterization class. The first one will be the width, which will be a number field. We need to give it a name. And then we're also going to add our first constraint, which will be a minimum since we can't have negative dimensions in our physical world. We're also going to add a default equal to 30, just so that our user will have something to see when they open the app. The second one we will make is the length. We will make this a number field as well, call it length. And again, we will add the minimum and a default. So now we should have a 30 by 30 by one meter slab. Now we still need to connect these inputs to our controller. And we do that by going into our view, into the function, and we will change the length to params dot length and the width we will change to perhaps stop width for the y direction save your app you will see it is reloading let's go back to the browser and refresh we can now see our two dimensions the width and the length and here we can see the slab if i want to change one of these to let's say 10, the app will automatically update this in our view. Now for the next step, the easiest way to distinguish the slab as a concrete foundation from the windows, which will be made of glass, is to assign materials. In Victor, we can give our geometries, materials, and properties. So for this example, let's go back into the editor. And here we will import color and material from the Victor geometry module. So color and material. Then we'll go back to our controller into the get geometry function. And here we will make two materials. We will first make the concrete, which will be a material and we will give it the name concrete. It's that simple. For the glass of the windows, we will go with glass, which will also be a material. We will name it glass, but we will go one step further and assign a color. For our glass windows, we want it to be a light blue and we will use an RGB code. And we're going to choose a light blue hue that windows often have on sunny days. So we will go the color, is equal to our color function and then add the RGB values, which will be 150, 150 and 255. Now that we have our materials, let's give our existing slab a material property. At first, we will change its name to facade. Since this will be the outside of our building and we want that to be clear for anyone that reads our code. To add the material property, we can type material equals concrete. And that's how we assign the material. For the windows, we will simply copy the facade. We will call it windows. And we will change the material to glass. So now we have two elements in our geometry. To combine them, we need to make a group, and this group will be our floor. To do that, let's first import group from the victor.geometry module, like so, and then we will define our floor. And the floor will be this group that consists of the facade and the windows in square brackets. Then we don't have a cube anymore, but we want to show the floor. So here we will return the floor. Now go ahead and save your application. You will see the app is reloading. And if we go back to our browser, 
refresh the page. So as you can see, the windows are inside of the foundation. Now to make our floor a bit more convincing, we are going to make some offsets in the geometry and give it a little bit of overhang like you have in real buildings. Now to make the offset, let's go back into our editor and we're going to first change some dimensions. The first one I'm going to make is make the windows a bit bigger. Let's set this to two meters. And next we will add some width and length to our facade. That we'll do by adding two meters to the length and one meter to the width. This will create the overhang. And finally, we also need to move the slab above the windows. Otherwise, it will still be inside each other. And now the geometric term for moving is translation. And how we do that in Victor is simply by saying the facade. We will translate it. And then we will give it the coordinates um, or the vector in which the slab needs to be translated. In this case, it needs to be translated upwards. So we'll go zero in the X direction, zero in the Y direction, and one and a half in the Z direction. Now, if we save our app in the editor, app is ready, and we go to the browser, we refresh the page, you can now see that we have made our floor. Now, to turn our floor into a building, we want to duplicate this floor upwards. And we can do that by creating a linearly spaced pattern. So let's go back into the editor. Let's start by importing linear pattern from victor.geometry. Then we will scroll down to below floor and we're going to start making the building. The building will be a linear pattern. The Arguments for the linear pattern are very simple. We need what we're going to duplicate, in this case, the floor. Then we will need the direction. And this, because we're working in 3D space, needs to be a 3D vector. And in this case, we're going one unit or in the Z direction. Um, the next step is to add the amount of elements we want. And we will make it 16. So we will get 16 floors and then finally we need to give it a spacing and we will assign three now that we have our linear pattern let's change the output to building instead of floor save the application and go back to the browser here we will refresh the page if we change one of the parameters so let's say 50 we can see the app updates and we now have something that looks like an office building. Now, we still have two things that we want to make parametric for our building. The number of floors and the color of the facade. For our floor, let's go into the editor and let's add another number field. And we will call this one the number floors. And again, make it a number field give it the name number floors and then we are going to make this one a slider you will see exactly what the slider looks like when we refresh the app later for the slider it's important to add a minimum we want at least one floor and it's also good to have a maximum otherwise the slider cannot end and we will make it 40 um, this number can obviously depend on the maximum buildable height of your foundation or what the municipality sees uh, as a permittable height and to make uh, the user experience uh, good like we did earlier we will also add the default and set it to 16. for the color of our building we'll need to go into the imports again and we need to add color field to victor.parameterization then we can go into our parameterization and we can add the building color. 
that will be the color field. And for that, we just need to give it a name, like so. Then we need to connect our inputs to our controller and the color will be of the facade, which right now is the concrete. So we will go into our material and assign the color of this material equal to the params dot building color. Then for the number of floors, we need to go into our linear pattern and change this part to params dot number floors. All right. Then you can go ahead and save the app. App is ready. We'll go back to the browser. When we refresh the page, we will see now it does not load. We need to first choose a building color. Let's go with a nice beige. And as we do that, we see the building updates. Now let's change the number of floors to 29. And as you can see now, we have a much taller building. It's always good to give the user experience a little bit of attention. So let's add some text to our parameterization to inform the user about our application. Let's go into the editor. Let's import the text function from the Victor parameterization. And then let's add a welcome text to the parameterization. Now I'm going to make it so that it's easy to read for other coders. And we will start off with a hashtag to indicate our title. And this will be 3D parametric building, building app. Then we can write in this app, the user can change the dimensions of the building. Choose the amount of floors and a color for the facade. Make sure that all looks good. Then you can go ahead and save the application. All right, then we go back into the browser. Let's refresh the page. And as you can see, our text appeared here. Let's once again give the building a color. And there you have it. And as you can see now, you have successfully completed the parametric building tutorial. If you would like to expand on this application as a way to practice, I highly recommend you try to make the windows opaque so that we can have a look inside. Or maybe you can try make the window size and the foundations of the floors uh, parametric as well so that a client can explore a floor to ceiling window design. Now, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to learn more about the possibilities with Victor, feel free to try out our other tutorials. For now, good luck and happy coding.